Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Lizon from Lifestyle Integration. Recently, we published a YouTube video that showed that exposure to near-infrared light could help with dementia and Alzheimer's. One could perhaps understand the naysayers with respect to this, however, as the research is still relatively new and ongoing. However, after I share with you this new study that's come out, there will be no doubt that daily exposure to near-infrared saunas needs to seriously be considered as a daily addition to people's health and wellness routines to get all the benefits of that near-infrared sauna with respect to their health and their overall well-being, chronic degenerative diseases, including dementia and Alzheimer's. In December 2016, in the journal Age and Aging, a study was published called Sauna Bathing is Inversely Associated with Dementia and Alzheimer's Disease in Middle-Aged Finnish Men. And what this means is that the more that these men were using their saunas, the less the amounts of dementia and Alzheimer's were present in these people. There was a strong correlation between the amount of saunaing that they did versus the amount of dementia and Alzheimer's. And this is a very well constructed study that rigorously shows the effects of saunas and the effects on dementia and Alzheimer's. This is a huge finding in and of itself, but when you combine this finding with the previous study I mentioned, which is called turning on lights to stop neurodegeneration, the potential of near-infrared light therapy in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, we have some massive implications. Now what we have are two different studies that are showing that not just near-infrared helps with dementia and Alzheimer's, but also the simple use of saunas. The implications of this, when you combine those two therapies into one modality of being, the modality being near-infrared saunas, is absolutely massive to help with these problems, Alzheimer's, dementia, and perhaps other neurodegenerative problems. So why haven't you heard of this? The reality is, and I'd be lying to you if I said anything different, the answer is that a lot of the research is still not finished. And when it comes to research, I'd love to be able to say one plus one equals two, but there's still more questions that need to be figured out. There's still more dose amount, dosages that need to be figured out. How long do you spend in a sauna? How much time do you need to be exposed to near infrared and at what strength? So there is more research that needs to be done, but the existing evidence, if you have or you're worried about dementia or cognitive problems is so strong that in my opinion, we need to be taking early action to try to address it based on the information that we currently have. So while I can't advise you medically on what to do, I can offer my opinion on what I would do in these circumstances. The evidence is so strong when it comes to the benefits of heat therapy and dementia and Alzheimer's. The research papers are clear. The benefits to heat therapy are immense and we've referenced those on our website. They include things like increased insulin sensitivity, weight loss, increased growth hormone production for healing and repair, all kinds of benefits. And in a similar way, the benefits to near infrared are also clinically immense. The research behind it is huge. It's often referred to as photobiomodulation or LLLT for those that want to look into it a little bit more. But the benefits of near infrared beyond cognitive benefits are huge. Everything from stress management to regrowth of hair to weight loss, um, the, the getting off thyroid medications and even things like depression, massive benefits. When you combine the benefits of heat therapy and near-infrared light, in my opinion, I believe we have a winner and it's something we need to seriously consider, certainly from a preventative perspective, to try to deal with these chronic degenerative, really lifestyle diseases that are 
Alzheimer's, and dementia. So think of implementing a near-infrared sauna into your daily routines in this following way. What you see up here is the innovation diffusion curve. And it's an explanation on how a lot of introduction to technology comes about. I am an innovator and an early adapter. I saw that there were benefits to near-infrared and heat therapy and I went out there and I researched and I looked into it and ultimately we developed our own near-infrared unit and heat unit to be able to benefit myself from the heat and from the near-infrared. So I'm certainly an early adapter. You on the other hand on the side of this video are not necessarily going to be an innovator but you may become an early adapter depending on your comfort levels with the technology and the information that's out there. You're learning how it works and as a result you may decide that you wish to use it in your daily routines. There is no right or wrong time to implement something like this. It just comes down to when you learn about it and what your comfort levels are with it in deciding whether to bring it into your daily health routines. So if I could predict one thing moving forward in the future it will be that the use of near-infrared and in the example that I'm giving you here the combination of near-infrared with heat therapy will become a very significant tool in the battle against chronic degenerative diseases moving forward. I'm convinced in all the research I've looked into that light therapy and near-infrared light therapy is going to be a huge tool. It increases the ability of your body to produce energy or ATP. All of our cells have light receptors specifically for near infrared and when we absorb that light it produces more ATP, more energy. It also produces nitric oxide which dilates our blood vessels and gives better vascular flow so we have a lot of carryover um, effects from that. There's some debate that Alzheimer's may be a vascular issue, sort of like a, a diabetes vascular type of issue where the nitric oxide may be helping with that. It also produces things called transcription factors which help turn on genes to deal with stress and the repair, that's, um, and the repair of the damage that stress can actually cause on the body. And heat therapy is immensely well documented to increase insulin sensitivity, growth hormones, repairs, and now we've seen in this example of a study that it is completely correlated to Alzheimer's and dementia. There's a lot of studies that also show massive cardiovascular benefits as well. Our unit combines the best of near-infrared and heat therapy. The unit we designed was with you, the user, in mind, and that is to make it versatile, flexible, easy to use so that you have success with it. Our unit can be used anywhere from bedside, on the floor, in a shower cubicle, in a bathtub, or in an existing enclosure, or just in a small room. The versatility is immense and anyone anywhere can use it. For more information on our unit or for more information on near-infrared saunas, visit our website at nirsauna.com.au where we have a list of clinical references that you can take a look at to help make your decision but again predicting the future moving forward the use of near infrared saunas will be a huge tool in the battle against chronic degenerative diseases which will likely include Alzheimer's and dementia. So until next time keep well I'm Dr. Todd Lison from Lifestyle Integration.